Well, hi, thanks for joining me in my shop here. Just about to start on a, another radio here, a uh, General Electric radio. It's got a nice look to it. Really nice look. And uh, another Bakelite case. It's got its knobs. Looks like a little bit of damage to the paint on the numbers here, but not much. Just a little bit here and there. Really cool looking dial in there. Great, it's got a nameplate here. 25 watts. It's a model C100. Has a phono input. Good show. Why don't we just pop the back off here? See, it's been put on with a couple different kinds of screws. Barely on. Oh, that's too tight. Too tight. That's way too tight. Don't want tight screws at the plastic or any material like that. Here we go. Let's pull this apart. The cord looks replaced. I think that's the original cord. Well, looking pretty good inside. This whole back plate is on an angle, so these tubes are all angled. It's a light sitting here. That's kind of a crazy spot for the light, isn't it? Just in the middle of the radio. Ooh. It looks like a hand-twisted wire connection from the output transformer in the back here to the speaker. Oh, that's a voice coil. Oh, it's ripped right out of the speaker. Ooh, off to a bad start. That's, that's the kind of thing that... Uh, that's tough to deal with. Okay, it's got a string in there. Yeah, I'd love to plug it in, but with the speaker and the condition it's in, it won't hear anything anyway. Okay, so the pointer doesn't move, it just rocks back and forth a wee bit, so some stringing problems. Nice enough radio, it's worth fixing, even with the speaker in its current condition. So let's, uh, uh, let's get this out of the cabinet, get a better look at it. Wires are in fairly good shape, you know. Not as stiff as, as many. Two or three screws holding it again. They're different types of screws, which is just bad, bad, bad. Don't see many speakers with <coughs> torn voice coil leads. I wonder if we'll be able to figure out why that's happened. Taking four screws out of this radio, and none of them are, are the same. Okay. Knobs are in good shape, just very dirty. Oh, I bet you somebody pulled the radio out and damaged the speaker at that point. That'd be my guess. There we go. Look at 
the uh, antenna on the back. It's quite quite visible in the camera. Oh, it's been done. Perfectly, perfectly square corners on the loop here. It makes me wonder why they would do that or how they would even do it. Okay, no surprises in the cabinet. The front glass is held on with... Oh. I was going to say it's just held on with uh, some little clips here. But it looks like it's been glued... Oh. Loose paint there. Yikes. I'll just leave that alone until I can get a better look at it. I'm going to have to take the speaker right out of it, too. Since the speaker is going to be part of the problem. These press wire here. I can just pull it off. The other one. Oh, I just ripped it off. That was actually, oddly enough, shoved in the wrong way. It's kind of weird how that was. Oh well. Oh boy, at a glance, looks like that voice coil lead is, is shot completely. <clears throat> bad, bad, bad. Two screws, four, uh, should be four. Uh, this may be, this isn't even the original speaker. <clears throat> Fits well, probably is. Yeah, that voice call has been ripped right out of, uh, you can actually see it's missing from the front here. Well, there's a whole new area. I've never tried to fix a uh, speaker with a torn voice coil. <coughs> I'm not sure how easy or impossible that is. I do know somebody who fixes speakers uh, professionally. Busy guy, too. Um, that's all he does. Just Resurround them, put a new, put a new cone, new paper cone in them. Everything. You can see how mangled this is. So somebody who just wasn't familiar with what was going on got in there and uh, <clears throat> one way or another tugged that right out. Then later connected the wire to it, hoping that by connecting the lead wire to here we would get something. But no. paint on the back of this is flaking right off. There's a piece of it here. You want to be very careful with that, that's for sure. Look the radio, it's surprise. Oh, this capacitor is a replacement. It doesn't fit. It doesn't quite fit in here. I'm going to get that antenna off here. His antenna connections are not correct. They are basically shorted here together. It probably should be down here. One here, one here. That's probably what it should be. And, uh, yeah, one's 
just twist it. So we've had somebody who doesn't really know how radios work, basically twisting together the loose wires on a guess. They made some bad guesses. Bad guess on the speaker and a bad guess on the antenna. But probably no harm to the radio. Now why is the light sitting inside the radio like this? It's kind of normally expected to be right towards the front. Not sure if that's its original installation location or not. It's a big light though, eh? I won't worry about that too much. Let's see underneath. Oops. Wow. Well, lots of work has been done under here. I think. This certainly looks like a fairly new capacitor. It has a bunch of Hunt pre-molded capacitors, which are, I believe, known to be not too good. Got this big guy here, 0.1 microfarad, 600 volt capacitor. Um, still got a fair number of paper ones in it. There's another molded one down here. It's a little bit of a different color, different style. There's a high wattage resistor. Looks good. Well, looks to be in fairly good condition. If the speaker were connected, I would... Uh, well, I can always put a temporary speaker on. Yeah, why don't we do that? Let's do that. So I'll put that there. Can't beat plugging it in for the first time. Now these wires are going to break off here pretty soon there obviously then flex a lot on that output transformer. I have my soldering iron warmed up and at the ready here. Switch off. This thing almost looks like it's been oiled up. Just for the look of it. Feels okay. Are we ready? Switch is off. Powering it on with <coughs> one light bulb, this one here has a restriction light, so I'll turn it on, we'll see it bright and dull. Here we go. Of course, you won't see it now until I <laughs> fool you until I turn the switch on. Here we go, watching the light. Bright and dull. There it goes. Okay. It's a five tube set, no transformer. <coughs> I have it plugged into an isolation transformer, so there's no possibility of a potential on the case relative to ordinary earth. Turn it up a bit. Yeah, when the light didn't come on. Oh! There we are. Here it comes. Now, most of that rumbling is my furnace, by the way. Not 
to good. computer doing that. Very good. So really the issue is fixing that speaker or finding a replacement. Probably pretty easy to find a speaker of the right dimensions. There's still maybe just a touch of metal right there. Let's get a closer look at it and see what uh, see what we can see here. Focus my camera in closer. Get a really good close up look at that. And you can see the other one to the left. It's really just matted in dust, isn't it? Try and remove all that dust. I'm going to be running the vacuum here, so. Guard your eyes. I've left the radio on in the meantime. It's got a nice big bright light on it, so it's a little hard to forget. There we go. spot. Could be some strands there. Might be just enough. Would be better to put the same speaker back, obviously, than trying to put another one in. Blue 
loose. Bulb was loose. Well, pretty good. Got information. At least I got the uh, model number in that. I'm sure I can find a schematic. And uh, oh, look at the cabinet here. So the screws go into these holes. But look at this one. Can you see that? You probably can't. Let me just give it a close up here for a sec so you can get a bit of a look at it. So that's what the holes should look like. Never put a big screw in there, screw it in hard, because this is what you're going to end up with. You end up with a smashed off piece. It's like a longer screw can still reach down in there, but uh, you really want to be careful about screwing in there. Look at the, look at the uh, case here, isn't that cool? I wonder if the whole thing cleans up like that. Yeah, I think it would. I think most of this is just superficial dirt. Come in here. You know, from a, like a thing was really dirty and somebody cleaned it, but they didn't really clean it all that well. And this is what you've been left with. I think it's going to be a great looker. I think it's well worth trying to repair, no doubt about that. It's not that much wrong with it, really. So, there we go. Thanks a lot for watching the checkout on uh, this radio. The uh, General Electric model C100. C100, that should be easy to remember.